and yet the night has fallen. The sounds of night creatures echo through the world around you. Fog blankets your house in a cloud of eerie mist. You sit alone in your dark home, watching your favorite horror program. You sit on the edge of your seat, anxiously grasping your remote and the popcorn bowl. You shudder at the howls and the screams as the monster on screen slowly lumbers toward you. And then suddenly, without warning, you turn off your TV and decide you'll sleep with the lights on tonight? Wow, what a baby. But that's okay. Because Dave Captivelle is here to help with even the most pathetic scaredy cats to experience the best in horror entertainment. From spooky to corny to demonic to gory, if it makes your screen scream, then this sociopath wants to discuss it. Welcome, boys and girls, to Recapitate! <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to Recapitate. My name is Dave Catville, and welcome back to the only show. <laughs> Where it's good to hear evil. Today on the show, I've got with me a, a good friend. He's an animator, video editor, and artist. Say along, uh, hello to Froggy with Fries. What's going on, man? Oh, it's good to hear evil, but it's not good to hear that. Goodness me, that was a long one. That was uh, uh, quite an extensive uh, tonnage of evil there. I know, I don't know what, I think the premonitions are coming for us, Dave, I'm worried. I, I scared the viewers away, no one's here anymore, it's just you and All me. Alright, well that's just, well that means that we can cuddle up on the couch, get cosy, and watch a brilliant movie All together. Alright, good, well I was gonna say that nobody's here, I just wanna say, look, I, I, I can't, I fucking hate horror movies, man, I can't believe I'm here. Like, <sighs> they put me on this show, expect yeah. me to talk about this, oh, oh wait, no, people are still listening, oh, oh, oh yeah, uh, horror movies are great, um... I don't have time for these bits, Dave, let's get on <laughs> to the guest. <laughs> Alright. You introduced this beast of a film. I'm in love with it. All right. Speaking of having a guest, which is you. See what I did mm -hmm. there? Um, kill me. I got uh, it. We're going to talk about uh, The Guest, which is uh, a very interesting film. Uh, this is uh, this is another one that I had not seen before when we did uh, doing this show. Um, it is a... Uh, <sighs> This one's hard to describe because it's... it's... It is a strange one. It's a personal favorite of mine, honestly. This was my favorite movie of 2014. This is Adam Wingard's The Guest. So this is only his second movie as well. Adam Wingard, also known for uh, Your Next. Your Next. And he also did the... Uh, have you ever seen VHS? Yeah. Oh, he was VHS? Well, he was certain segments within VHS 1 and 2. I love VHS. I think, I actually do think somebody is coming on and talking about that episode. Oh, uh, well, well, hopefully we'll see some more Adam Wingard in future episodes. Yeah, but I yeah, definitely, he, he, like, from he, this movie, it really sold me on him. Yeah. I mean, it shows he's competent. Like, the with VHS, it was very much short films. Um, but this, this is like his magnum opus, um, in my opinion. Until, until we see Blair Witched and things, I guess. Yeah, I actually, uh, I forgot that he was the one that did the new Blair Witch, which is, uh, not doing too well right now. In terms of reviews, or is in getting people it, in the seats? Oh, no, people are getting in the seats. The reviews aren't doing too well. Oh, uh, right. Okay, well, fair enough. I but, think, you know, well, that's that's a subject for another time. I've not seen it yet. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, I'll, when I see it, I'll people will know. Like, But, uh, <laughs> but no, sure be to dive into this movie, that. um, yeah. well, what do you like about it so much, uh, Dan? Oh gosh! Well, uh, to to just it, it's hard to solidify. I mean, this is a horror podcast. Uh, we were talking just before the show that this is this a horror movie, um, which I think is a big question. On the back of the Blu-ray, it is described as you said before, like a suspense thriller. So I think it doesn't even belong on this show. I guess maybe we should decide at the end: is this a movie that should be on Recapitate, even uh, though it's going to be on Recapitate anyway? You know what? It's not. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> it's a good movie. <laughs> no, I, 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 I think it qualifies, and this is the reason why I think it does, honestly, is because it's suspenseful enough 
that when I was watching it, I was on the edge of my seat for a bunch of it. And Mm -hmm. in that case, I definitely think it qualifies. Considering the fact that I've... I'm going to have movies on here that are made for preschoolers. Oh, fantastic. So I think this is okay. I think you're all right. Okay, we'll get by with this. Um, well, I suppose, shall I just give a bit of my background in terms of the horror genre in general? If, oh, if, absolutely, if you want to go into it. Well, yeah, like, I uh, I know that it was uh, a big one that you just covered being the Evil Dead series. My favorite. Um, this was my true introduction to horror. I'd seen, like, a handful of, like... Uh, like I'd say like Saw and things like when I was uh, younger but when I saw Evil Dead which was introduced to me by my third party co-pilot being Brett so shouts out to Brett at Thrillhouse93 check him out on Twitter third party controller uh, they'll, in the description they make funny videos watch them we, we, we make fantastic videos I'm, I'm gonna gloat about that but I was <laughs> over Brett's one night and and he was like, okay, we, we watched like the whole of Tim and Eric season one, which I'd never seen before either. <gasps> uh, gross. Uh, that was just a bit of demon possession. We'll, we'll let that slide. But um, yes, Evil Dead. He put on Evil Dead and I fell in love with it. And I was like, shit, maybe I like horror movies. And I had never really thought about that before. Um, and from that, then I checked out Sean, which I know you've covered as well. Um, I fell in love with that. So it was very much these like zombie movies that I was getting into in terms of uh, horror. You seem to, I think it, you sort of connected with the whole uh, very comedic horror uh, splatter pieces. I, th- I think that's where a lot of people can kind of find their their way into the genre because those I know so gate- many people. Those are the gateway drugs of uh, horror movies. <laughs> yeah, like I know loads of people who are like, oh, I don't, I don't like scary movies, but I like things like uh, Rocky Horror, Shaun of the Dead, um, Evil Dead, even right. like Cabin in the Woods. Right, because those are, uh, I think because those are easier to watch just because they have that levity, you know, it allows you to laugh with it, so you're not scared the whole time. But, uh, I mean, those all have elements that are creepy, which is why they work. I mean, like, if you don't like gore, you're probably not going to like Shaun of the Dead. I mean... Yeah, I mean, like, I I think it was a good gateway into getting into horror, but... That, I think like one of the first biggest steps that I took in terms of you know I, I'm not I like you, you've, you've seen my art I like fucking bright happy things you know I'm all about that so <laughs> to see some of the gore and things it you know was a little off point but in a comedic setting it was fine but I heard reviewers um, saying that the movie You're Next which is an Adam Wingard movie is first entirely independent film I think um, people were comparing this to it gets to that level of Evil Dead 2 where it gets incredibly over the top with the gore, it becomes really fun, um, and and you know I, now having seen the movie You're Next, I think that's slightly misleading. It's it's not quite on that level of Evil Dead in terms of the comedy, but it was it was still a suspenseful kind of horror movie, right? And and that was that made me go like, okay, I'm I'm kind of ready to watch more horror. So from that, I've gone and watched. Um, things like vhs and um and a lot of modern horror um and i've seen like the thing and everything like that but that's my general background but i I found it interesting that adam wingard was that first branch into deeper stuff beyond the comedy yeah that's that's interesting because i i um i'm not really used to having people uh get into the horror genre from modern stuff considering the fact that i mean i don't really as much think this as most people do but most people think that modern horror is garbage which, in a lot of cases, it's not the best. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, because people always, obviously for everything, like, especially, it's kind of weird for the horror genre, because, uh, like, action, obviously, like, you can do anything you want with that, right? Yeah. Nobody's going to complain that, oh, this wasn't over the top enough, or this whatever, or romance, but horror, and comedy as well, those are the two things that, like, people always complain about, it wasn't as good as the original. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can agree with that. And, and I, I think that's why you find... Is that why remakes are so abundant within horror? The, the, the absolutely. People are so keen to say, oh, it's not as good as the original because of the abundance well, of Well, I mean, let's, uh, to be honest, uh, horror is the easiest genre of movie to make. I mean, that's why they're so prevalent. It's because, yeah. I mean, all you have to do if you wanted to make a horror movie is buy a Halloween mask, a camera, and ketchup. <laughs> and you can make a horror movie. It's like, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. No but, doubt. I mean, we've made a few horror movies, I guess, in, in that case. Yeah, I mean, yeah, same, same here. It's just like, uh, it. That's why they're so abundant. It's like all these indie films, people go for horror 
is because it's just the easiest uh, genre to make. But um, I mean, even with something like Your Next, where they're in the house and it's all about house invasion, um, it's something that we have seen a million times. But the I think the twist that made it good was that the lady within that movie, lady, look at me, um, she was so competent, and that was almost the twist of the movie that oh yeah, she's getting rushed by all of these slashes, but she can actually take them on. Rather than just run around the house in the screen, Michael Myers style. So. Well, I've always, like I said in the, I said in the last episode with, uh, with Zach that I, uh, I love the, the horror hero, the guy or girl who finally is like enough is enough and they stand up for themselves, because yeah. most people in horror movies just get killed or run away, and when people fight back, it's kind of fun because you want to do that yourself. Mm. Um, well, I think she's she was definitely. A bit like that Ash character, you know, like the, the character of Ash or what have you. Where she she's kind of the unassuming character, and then halfway through the movie, she's she's like she's getting blenders on people's heads and blending their fucking brains. It's great, right? So, but yeah, so that was your next Adam Wingard's first movie, what have you? <laughs> Let's totally talk about Adam Wingard's. Uh, is it his second movie? The guest. Yes, is? The, the the guest is his second movie. So this is this is. The one that, you know, th this is the one that made me realize, oh shit, this this guy can fucking direct. This guy knows what he's doing. Yeah, one thing I, the first thing I'll say going into this movie is that this is definitely, with the exception of the end, this is definitely a bit of a different horror movie tone for this show. Because this one relies way more on just quiet suspense. Yes. There's a I, lot I, of, uh, because actually... Three fourths of the movie, there's not like a lot of blood or, you know, jump scares or anything crazy stuff like that. Well, I mean, there's a couple things. There's a lot of really cool action scenes, but uh, there's me, a lot of Halloween as well. Yeah, but uh, the like the real creepiness of this movie comes from the main character's interaction with people. Yes, Dan Stevens as the character. Uh, David, if you want to call him that, or the guest being the title yeah, character, and he sells this movie. He, he's absolutely fantastic he he is in all of those scenes you're talking about these slow built ups you, you know I think one of the most pivotal things about this movie that is a reoccurring thing that happens throughout is when you've got like a piece of music that just builds and builds and builds and builds and builds and builds and then as soon as there's a it'll just be focused on Dan Stevens and then yes. there'll be a harsh cut and then you just hear that crazy synth yeah, it's at the uh, and it brings you down from it, and it it gives you that chill down your spine. It's it's nothing horrific or gory, but man, it's it's unnerving for sure. It's it's very like this is not a negative at all. It's dry, not in the sense like oh it's boring. In the sense where like the interactions he have with people, it's not like jump scares everywhere. When he does something bad, it's just completely like to him. It's just like normal. Hmm. Like, well, I, I've had people say that his character in this movie is comes across as awkward, and I think it's never quite awkward. It's just it's strange to see his character be so confident and in control of every scene, and and it's it, it's almost like a Willy Wonka where he knows exactly what's going to go down. He knows, you know, he he's one step ahead of everybody else, but he's just keeping it to himself. You know what I mean? Yeah, this movie, we should probably explain the main premise of the film. Yeah, for sure. It, okay, um, the premise of the movie is that this family's son was killed uh, in a uh, war in, I suppose this was, uh, was it like Afghanistan? or? I think it, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, their son was killed, and uh, we pick up right at the beginning with the mother mourning, and uh, all of a sudden, this young man uh, shows up at her house claiming to be a real good friend who was in the same uh, troop as uh, her son. As, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so and when he basically he's, says... He's there, he's in the in the family port, he's in like the picture of like this army troop and everything. Right, and he's basically said like he was there when her son died and her son asked him, as, as many soldiers would do, my last dying breath, please like say I love you to my family, right? Um... And when he comes to do that, he basically is like, yeah, I just came to relay my message. I'm leaving in the morning. And she's like, no, well, where are you going? And he, like, he clearly doesn't have a plan. And so they invite them to stay, uh, him to stay with them for a couple days. And uh, he starts to get very acquainted with the family. Very and close. from there, 
things just start getting weird. Things escalate that his relationship with the family becomes slightly intense. A series of murders start to happen. Um, and and I, I guess you can kind of see where it's going from there. It's, it's about this this gentleman, the guest, living with this family and, and sort of his presence. You know what was weird? I, I didn't want to, like, I mean, obviously, spoilers on this show or whatever, but um, I'm just going to quickly come out and say this. Uh, I know this is supposed to sort of be like a mystery. I never once questioned who the killer was, but I never minded it. Which is weird, because a lot of times when you watch a movie where it's supposed to be like a whodunit or whatever, mm. you're always like, if it's the first person you expect, it sucks. In this one, his performance was so good that I didn't mind knowing that he would be the killer. Well, yeah, for, I, I think it's not even about that. I think you, as soon as you start hearing, you know, the father of the family's um, boss gets killed, so the father of the family gets promoted you instantly know that it's uh, dan stevens's character he basically and his idea is he's almost like a uh well, actually it's a good line the dad says where like he's like careful what you wish for because he got a better job but his boss was killed dan's character he's connecting with this family by eradicating their problems in the worst way sort of yeah I think you're definitely right there. Like, when the son, Luke, he, he's, uh, you know... He's Getting a, bullied, yeah. Right. He's very tech-savvy. He's kind of a nerd. And he gets bullied at school. And when David goes to pick him up for, for uh, one day for from school, uh, he basically goes to a bar where they are. And one of my favorite scenes in the whole movie is when he buys all the guys Cosmopolitans. <laughs> and blowjob shots. Yeah, and blowjob shots. And then they come over and say they don't want the drink, and he just destroys them. Like, the I will say that, that the action in this was I was not expecting that. It's it's the action in this is is strange. It's it's so intense. It's very quick cut. It's it's you know the soundtrack now. Okay, I, I, we'll i we'll dial this back a bit. I mean for my context for you know, like I was saying, coming from this this uh very minimal background with horror and, and as i said this is probably a great gateway as well bearing in mind it's not necessarily um it's not a super gory movie it's not a super paranormal movie um at the end it gets a little bit bloody i will say it yeah it, and it gets it almost gets a little bit not quite paranormal but a bit sci-fi almost but i i was i was staying at um tom uh his house uh, from third party controller as well. Brett was there and they both turned to me and say, Do you wanna watch the guest? And I was like, What's the guest? And they were like, Oh dude, you you you'll you'll love this movie and I was like, Oh I've not heard of it. I I didn't know that Adam Wingard had directed it at the time. And they were just like, Oh you'll you'll really, really like it and then Brett was like, Yeah, I've watched this twelve times in the past week and I was Damn. like What the fuck? <laughs> And, and yeah, I mean, this is how Brett is with films. When he gets obsessed into a movie, he gets extremely obsessed. Um, in a positive way. He, he, he just was totally in love with this I have I actually have a similar thing where, like, if I discover something new and I really like, I have to let everybody know about it. I do that, yeah. too. He's, he's exactly the same. Yeah. So I knew nothing about this movie, and I was like, okay, the guest, the, uh, is this, like, a horror? And they just they turned to me and said, this movie is evil Captain America. And that was the only oh my thing. god, that's such a fucking good way to describe this movie. <laughs> that, that was the only thing. That is clue so accurate. It was just this is evil Captain America. And I was like, what? So we, we put it on and you know, you get that scene when David comes to the house and, and as you said, the mother's there, and he's he's instantly talking about, you know, I knew your son. And she gets upset and and you know, within moments of meeting this guy, she's like, You can stay with us, you can have Caleb's room. The mother is is so ad like she is so not over her son's death and she wants to almost replace uh dan stevens character with her son as quickly as possible right. um so you can see that effect he instantly has on each member of the family when he meets them like as you said the the young boy luke starts looking up to him uh from everything from when they they're like doing the homework together they the call father uh, yeah. halloween pumpkins together the father treats him as like a friend they always drink beer and stuff together yeah uh, yeah like, use it, using Dave as an excuse to drink beer. Right, great. exactly. He's like, hey, you want a beer? And he's like, sure. Like, even though, like, you know he shouldn't be. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so, yeah, it's, it, that was really interesting. I mean, watching this movie for the first time, 
it left an impact because then it, I, I had that personal effect where I wanted to share this movie uh, with other people as well after, after seeing it. So, um, yeah, his relationship with the family, you know, the mum super motherly treats basically almost replacing him with a son. D you know, dad's being very pally with him. Luke's looking up to him. Now the daughter, she she has a, a she looks at him in a lot of different ways. I feel. Yeah. Uh... This is uh, Anna Peterson is the character played by Maker Monroe, known for her hit performance in Independence Day. Oh really? Resurgence. She was in Independence Day Resurgence. The, oh, she was in the new <laughs> Independence Day. Yeah, I, I'm man, not sure she what was a uh, the one what was. a promising career. Yeah, no doubt. The only uh, reason... she, she's also the chicken. It follows. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense actually. Yeah, so she's doing a lot of like modern. That's kind of like uh, stuff. Jane Levy, who was in Don't Breathe and the Evil Dead remake. She's like kind of like that. She's going to be in a lot of horror movies now. Oh, sorry um, I'm actually, you know what? I'm not trying to pull the feminine thing, but I'm actually glad that women are starting to get pretty cool roles in horror movies now. Well, yeah, they're, they're not just resorted to running away from people screaming. Oh, right. It's, it. it's not just big buff guys every time saving the day. It's kind of cool that, you know, that happens. I mean, it's um, interesting that this movie, the big buff guy, is the villain. You know, he... he yes. This ha you know, Dan Stevens, good-looking lad, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, I, so, look, I fuck him. So, <laughs> he, like, he... Uh, that's arguably, like, the, his his presence, his acting style, his, him when he's so in control of a scene, so confident within himself, that I, it's almost like everybody in this movie is trying to suck up to him or admires him apart from Maker, like, Maker's character. And... When she first sees David, she she's like, she's kind of like, oh, okay, there's this guy who knew my brother. This is kind of weird. Then, do you remember the bit when they go to the Halloween party? Yes. And she kind of has to take him along as the date, but as soon as she's there, she's so happy to have him there because everybody's fucking wowed. Wow, this guy can carry two kegs of beer. Holy well, shit. Well, yeah, because she basically brought, like, you know, basically the really cool guy and they're like, well, one thing I liked a lot that they did with her is that She's obviously, like, you know, senior in high school, kind of, like, you know, I'm assuming that's around her age. Um, she's dating a bad boy. Yeah, like, uh, like, when she first sees David, she does that thing, like, any teenager would do, like, oh, there's somebody here? Okay, cool, I'm going to my room now. Like, th that's exactly how she is, so they kind of got that very realistic. Yeah. Um, but then there's the scene when she's going to the shower and out walks uh, David, looking fucking hot as fuck so and then I, from that point onwards she's i think she likes him you know after they go to this halloween party uh, she makes him the i think one of the most iconic things of the movie which is the full david cdr yeah definitely because she basically puts the soundtrack of the movie onto a cd to give him <laughs> which is very strange considering the soundtrack yeah. of this movie is entirely synth it's 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 a Fantastic. it's a John it's a John Carpenter wet dream. Okay, exactly. Yeah. exactly. It, you, you hear the music playing on this podcast? It sounds like that. <laughs> like as we were talking about before, the build up of the music and then the synthy things that just send it like a chill down your spine. The scene at the end with the Halloween party, with the with the way the music just thumps through like these uh, the the scene in the Halloween maze and things. It's fantastic. You cannot speak highly of this uh, soundtrack. That, that's we're, we're going to get into the Halloween maze part, uh, which is my favorite part, obviously. But uh, one thing I did want to bring up is that we're, since we're going to be talking about the actors in this movie, yeah, I did want to bring up because I, this is the last thing I expected. One of my favorite shows of all time is this TV series called Fringe. Okay. Uh, the uh, military leader is played by Lance Reddick who yeah. is Colonel Broyles in one of my favorite TV shows. When he was in this movie, I got so excited. <laughs> and he plays well, it's, the it's exact same character as he does in Fringe. Like, well, exactly they, the same character. He was cast appropriately in yeah. that case. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, the black the, the black guy. That's uh, him. And he's, he's a great actor. He does... Uh, st he, he has two roles. He either does military roles in shows or TV... Or he does weird adult swim things. <laughs> like, he does military stuff, and then he also does, like, Brett Gelman's Dinner with America and Eric Andre show. Well, so clearly knows what he's actually Seeing him in this movie was a really, like, pleasant surprise. That's all I'm trying no, to say. He, he does a good job. I love yeah, the scene. He's a great he's actor. 
when he's in the car with uh, Baker Monroe's character and he, and he basically explains that the, the parents have been killed. Um, and, and the way he looks after the kids towards the end of the movie, it almost gives me a little bit of a vibe, I mean, of that almost the token black Stephen King kind of thing a little bit. Um, with the, you know, he's there, he's he's looking after the kids, and uh, unfortunately he does uh, end up uh, meeting his demise at the hands of the killer as well. One thing I liked about this movie is that nobody survives except the kids. <laughs> it's true. That's kind let, of, let it's everybody. kind of dark. Oh, Even like, um... I thought uh, for half a second the that they were... I thought for half a second they were not going to bring up that the kids' parents were dead. Because, like, they waited, like, ten minutes in that car scene, like, to tell her, oh, by the way, your parents are dead. And I'm they, like, they, they whoa, did. what? Like, I love the scene later on when um, Maker's character goes to the little boy, and he sa- and, and she says, mom and dad are dead. And then he just goes, no, they're not. Why? You're lying. Why would you say that? And he's just he just, like, laughs it off. And it's like, wow, this is this, that's what you would say. Which is kind of weird. Yeah, I mean, like, if you f- if you found out your parents were just dead, you would be like, "That's a good one." Uh, why aren't you laughing? Like, that's exactly what you would do. Very, very um, strange. Now, as we said, we've talked about the opening of this movie, uh, the family dynamic, with uh, kind of like the typical father, rebellious daughter, little uh, nerdish kid, very motherly mother. Uh, this is where I feel like the opening of this movie is this. It is a drama, as you said, a suspense kind of thing going on. Now, when we get to that scene in the bar, when when David's there to intimidate the bullies from from the you know the bullies who are bullying Luke, um, we get that first action scene, which is a great, as we said, a great action scene. Feels like something out of Hotline Miami almost. You know what I mean? Kind of, and like the idea, because this was this is about twenty minutes in, I'd say, right? Yeah. The beginning of the movie. Nothing really like this has happened at all. It's very sort of just drama introducing. It seems just sort of like a normal, like this is just going to be a normal kind of weird drama. And I then think all you, of your a only, sudden, your only hints in that beginning are the, is the Halloween theme and that that consistent shot of just uh, the fact that this guy isn't sleeping. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? Like there's just these long shots on Dan Stevens of him not going to sleep in his bedroom, and then this action scene out of nowhere. And the action scene, you know what it reminded me a bunch of? Yeah. Uh, well, one of my favorite movies of uh, 2015 was Kingsman, The Secret Service. Yes. The Michael action. Va- th- Matthew Vaughn, great director. By the way, I, I, I know we should be talking about the guests, but Kingsman. The fact that that movie did not get some kind of award for that Freebird action scene is ridiculous. That is one of the best choreographed action scenes I have ever seen in a motion picture. Uh, the I one, the one where. Uh, What's his name? Oh, God. Uh, Colin Farrell. Co- yeah, Col- Firth. Colin Firth, Firth destroys everybody in that Westboro Baptist Church thing. That was amazing. Like Absolutely fantastic. Like, the fact that that did not get something is ridiculous. It's it's crazy. Matthew, Matthew Vaughn's fantastic. He's got, like, fantastic direction, though, especially when it comes to action. And the sense of humor that he does with this stuff as well. Yeah, like like um, I said, that... Looking forward to that sequel. That and Krampus were my two favorite movies of 2015. I've not seen so, Krampus yet. Oh, you should. I, I, this is like a third podcast I've plugged Krampus. Now that I think check about it out, it. check Krampus out. Yeah, watch it. I'm not gonna plug it again until I do the episode. Um, I'm gonna check it out. Then. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So this scene that happens in the bar with the kids. We talked about it already. The blowjob shots and the cosmopolitans. It, it is like your first like kick in the balls for this movie. Like, oh shit, yeah, th- something is gonna go down. Um. You you basically see like. When David orders his drink, he orders... Isn't it like a liter of hot sauce or some it's, shit? I it's forget. a, it's a, uh, a drink called a Fireball, which, you know, there actually is, like of course, Fireball whiskey. But it's basically like Fireball whiskey, the cinnamon, but mixed with actual hot peppers. It, it looks like he is drinking... Yeah, it looks like he's drinking, like, straight Tabasco. Yeah, but, he just drinks it in one. Right. So you you get this hint of, this guy's not sleeping, this guy can drink fucking a ridiculous drink and not even bat an eyelid Ugh, yeah. excuse me and uh but then you then also he- take into consideration because a lot of times they bring up like he is ex-military right yeah they bring that up a lot of times and the kid sort of goes along with it like oh well he was in a war he probably can like you know he can probably handle a drink kind of right maybe maybe that's why he's a little bit socially bizarre right exactly because, which is yeah. a very good backstory for this character but 
Um, and like as we said when he's at that Halloween party and he's carrying like the two kegs. And now I think for me what is a really pivotal scene which gets into the nitty gritty of who the fuck this guy is. Um, which is the mystery of the movie. We know that this guy is killing people. We know that he's killed the dad's boss. We know that he uh, takes the girlfriend's boyfriend to jail. We know that he kills those guys selling the weapons. That's a good uh, point. You know, I, you know what I said earlier about having known he was the killer the whole time? Mm-hmm. Now that I think about it, that wasn't really the mystery of the movie. The mystery of the movie, you knew he was the killer. The mystery was trying to figure out who Why? he was. Why? Yeah, exactly. Like, like he's such a pleasant guy, and he's clearly with this family for a reason, but we do not know why. Like, when he murders people, he apologizes. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's very strange. Like, he, when he kills the mother, uh, spoiler alert, but uh, <laughs> he, he, when, he ki- when he kills the parents, and, he, and he's, he, he, you know, and he's going out of his way to basically get rid of anybody that ever met him in this town, um, you know, he, he is very apologetic, very charismatic while he's doing it. I love the scene when he's at the diner and he throws those two grenades with a big smile on his face um almost in an apologetic way it's it's very strange but um he's he's almost charming right down to the point when he puts a bullet in your fucking head yeah he's a lot like uh i don't want to say patrick bateman because he's not as charming but there's an element of it you know yeah that's sort of that demeanor alex delarge from clockwork orange that's it's that's a, a good one that's yeah that's a good one that's a better example pers- person doing horrible things but they're having so much fun and, and, and so confident doing it. like the singing in the rain talking in. about the singing in the rain scene from yeah, clockwork yeah, yeah. Um, um so so yeah like i think we'll just go and dive in now in, in terms of the um you know th- this being an evil captain america movie if you want to call it that yeah no no so, i think that's that's fair to say so the military learn that these killings are going down. Um, they, uh, I, I think, uh, the, da- the daughter calls in him. to the army reserve to get a backstory on him, and it's they say that he's been dead for like a, a month or something. Yeah, but that this guy David has been dead for a month, and they're like this, but this other guy is here. So then the military get called in. They come in. They come and hit up this small town, and uh, and that puts Dave in hot water, evidently. Um, and that is the point in this movie when you get some explanation. You know, David goes out of his way to, to kill the parents. He's got to wrap up all loose ends, uh, ends essentially. Um, and then we get a, a explanation that this guy was a member of that original army platoon. Yes. But uh, he... We don't know which one. Uh, Luke looks up and David has been going to plastic surgeons and getting teeth replaced. Um, because when they, it's, it's, oh gosh, we really need to get into like the nitty gritty of like, there was, when he was in the army, he was not in a typical forces unit. It was like some kind of fucked up experiment. Yeah. Okay. To sort of just talk about the actual mystery. Uh, basically there was a secret program, like, like you said, this, the Captain America, like the super soldier thing. It's basically kind of like that. And they chose certain people and he was one of them. But apparently so was the son of the family. So uh, they're basically super soldiers. And they, uh, you know, they have all of this, uh, they have all these abilities. Obviously he's strong as shit. But then something goes wrong in the program. Yeah, like, they, the, it, it's it's all these guys that have been taken in for some secret hidden shit. And then, bam, out of nowhere, something's fucked up. And one of them has remained. They say that all of the teeth of these uh, guys have been knocked out. Um, and, and all their dog tags taken as well. Yeah, wasn't there also, like, uh, there was a fire who took that took place, right? In the uh, the facility or whatever. They were uh, starting this program. Yeah, so, and then this, uh, it's, it's David is the one guy that has emerged. Well, it's not even David, is it? David was one of the guys in that platoon. So right. one one of them looked like Dan Stevens, but this guy that has come to visit is he has had so much plastic surgery to look like David. You get the sense that he's done this before. He's gone to other families within this troop and and gone and stayed with these families, maybe given them a last request. Maybe he really did want the last thing to his family to be let them know I love them because it was the guest who was who had killed all of these uh, soldiers. But that's the question though why is he doing that you like i said pivotal moment in the halloween not the end halloween dance thing but the party that maker goes to with dan stevens he ends up getting laid doesn't he yeah Um, he does 
And he's there with that cute kitty girl, and she's there, and she's doing her thing. She takes him back to back into the bedroom. And she's there, she's she's giving him the whole thing, and he's lay there like a fucking plank, you know. He's he's just deadpan in the face, like he doesn't really know what to do. And she's she's there, like trying to totally like get on with him. And she says, Oh, what's wrong? I guess are you not really into this? Are you not feeling this right now? And as soon as she doubts him, he he's he's like, oh oh, oh no, I'll, I'll I'll show you. And then he picks her up, you know, she's on top of him. He he's then on top of her, and then he starts going at it like crazy and comes down with her later. And she looks pretty damn fucking happy after it. a damn a Dan Stevens fuck. So Dan Stevens fuck trademark. That's what people want to hear. Um, so it, you get that impression that he is so adaptive to situations. Um, that he he can play it just exactly how he's gonna be the unsuspecting guy almost. He, he, he's it's almost like he's designed to be this amazing person that everybody's supposed to love, and that's what happens. You know, that's why the family's yes. so happy for him to to stay with them. Now, I don't want to. Uh... Actually, you know what? I do want to sort of uh, ask this big question because the movie is very open ended. You never exactly get an answer as to who the guy is. You never find out. Is he his? Is he some kind of biological experiment? My it question was, is: Was was he you, another soldier? We don't right, know. Right. You brought up the uh, you know the thing about like he was in this troop, but who is he? Could it have possibly been the son, Caleb? Yes. For sure. Yeah. Maybe he just wanted somehow revenge on his family from how they were. He was trying to fix their lives. This is a stretch, obviously. I, I, but like I, I, I said, think this is it's open ended. Yeah, yeah, like there's no reason why this couldn't be Caleb that has gone back to his family, tried to make amends, but he's conditioned with this soldier's mentality that it's like he's trying his best and going completely the wrong violent way about doing it and as soon as things go tits up and the military come after him then it's like okay cut off all loose ends mission abort let's kill my family and get out of here you know the more and more i think about this movie the more interesting it becomes because like it really does leave a lot of possibilities open well yeah um, i mean he could be a fucking robot we don't know, <laughs> you know what no I mean? they never say anything all they all you know is that he's a government experiment but you don't know have a clue who he is and that really leads into the uh, the ending, which is the uh, the big Halloween dance chase, which yeah, is my that, favorite part of the movie. Let's dive right into like the Halloween dance. I, I, it's such a great scene because I mean the family are dead. Um, it's um, the head of the military who who dresses like Morpheus. It's great with a big black trench coat. He's yeah, he does straight out of the Matrix. But um, he's you know he's driving down and he picks up uh, Maker's character. And uh, I'm probably pronouncing her name right. Is it Maker? Maker? I don't know. Uh, what's her name? Maker is probably fine. The the YouTube network. That's what she is. Yeah, Maker. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, he's going down, and he tells you know he tells them of the of the family death and that, and then they go. Uh, Luke's got um, he's like got detention where he's helping out with the Halloween dance, so they they head there to pick up uh, Luke, um, and. You know, Dan is right behind them. He's taken out mom. He's taken out dad. He's avoiding the military. He kills all the people at the diner, including the little kitty girl that he fucked, which is a sad, a sad day indeed. That was a man. That was a rough scene. Mm. He literally, because the rest of the time he's been very like casual about his killings. He just straight up was like, "Fuck it," and he just shot her in the middle of public. Yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting as you said that he does apologize to the mother, apologizes to the father. And even when he's, you know, k trying to kill the kids, he's very friendly about the whole thing. It, it, he almost hasn't changed at all. But with, with, but with the I... cat girl he fucked, he just shoots him in the face and give a shit. That's why I'm starting to really think about the possibility of it being the son. Because the only people he apologizes to, and like he says, he's trying to do everything. He did not want to have to kill the family. That's why I'm sort of debating maybe it is him. Hmm. You could say if there was a fire, he got so fucked up he he, he couldn't even possibly return home, uh, and especially after the family. Then again, they say that Caleb was confirmed dead, but then David was also confirmed death. Exactly. Dead. Sorry. Is is, is this? This clearly isn't 
the guy that was in the picture being the guy who is David. It, it's it's got to be either the son or another member of that military troop, right? And I think it adds a hell of a lot more weight if it is the son. Now, uh, now, just just to go back to when he's actually killing uh, the mother, the scene in the house is pretty fucking fantastic as well. It, 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 that's the first full-on action scene, guns blazing everywhere, and 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 his death. Even you got to think he goes out and he, he shoots uh, all of these military guys rather heartlessly, but the way he kills the the mom and the dad is with a lot more respect, as you said, being apologetic. But he just slits the mum's uh, throat, I think. Yeah, he slips her throat and, like, stabs a knife in her chest. Ouch. Um, so, yeah, anyway, enough rambling about Dan Stevens being a motherfucking badass. He's going to play the Beast <laughs> in Beauty and the Beast, so I'm excited for that as well. well. There you go. Yeah, well, he is a little beast. He, uh, honestly, he is a beast. Biggest man crush going. Uh, you got to start in Downton Abbey, Uh-oh. I believe. We got a uh, we got a recapitate exclusive here. For we, all he with we, fries confirmed. We've got confirmed a, Steve, a Steve, Dan Stevens boyfriend. A Stevens a Steve, what the what's called the Stevettes. We're Steve we're Dan Stevettes here. The Stevettes. <laughs> that sounds like a fucking like doo-wop band from the, from, like, the Oh 50s. yeah, we just we just sing about his great performances in film and TV. Yeah, doo-wop the doo-wop Dan. That's that's the song they sing. I'm down with that. So. They arrive at the Halloween dance. This is when this thing goes full John Carpenter. Yeah, so my favorite. The, the the great setup for a finale is they're there. The little lads doing like cleaning up for the Halloween dance, and there's like a teacher there who's just like this bumbling idiot. And the military guy sh- shows up and he's like, "I'm looking for Luke." And he's like, "Oh, oh yeah, we're through here in the maze." W- well, how do I get through the maze? Left, right, 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 left, yeah, right, yeah. left. <laughs> Like, it's supposed to be, like, this really intense situation, and they're literally stuck in, like, this kid's maze. <laughs> he goes, it, you sure you got all that? And he just goes, uh, yeah, and then they just go through this, like, fucked up maze. It's great. Um, I do want to say real quick, I'm sorry, I, I do want to get into the ending, but I did want to point out my other favorite scene in the movie. Oh, yeah? Which was the, uh, the scene where David gets Luke out of getting expelled from school. Oh, the, the gay scene. Yes, that <laughs> scene is so intimidating. It's ver- a very funny scene as well. He basically, uh, Luke has been being picked on these bullies all this time, and he finally stands up for himself when this guy calls him a faggot. And when he, he basically, he took a lesson from David, and he just fucks him up with a yardstick. <laughs> uh, and then basically the principal's like, well, we had to expel him. Uh, you know, there's a no violence policy, sorry. And David brings up, all of a sudden, he's like, you know what you're doing is a hate crime, right? And he's like, excuse me? He said, what did, what did he call him? Uh, he called him a faggot. Or do you realize you're allowing people to uh, pick on a gay student in your school? We sh- you know what? We're going to sue the school. And they start to walk out, like, threatening to sue the school. And the teacher gets so scared <laughs> that they just say, how about after school in t- detention instead? He said, okay. Yeah, so, uh, and that's also our reason for that's why. That's the problem. Like, Luke, they make so... David so likable at first. Yeah. Like, that's the problem. <laughs> you love it's him. Like, and then he turns, like, batshit crazy. So... But, that, but that, that, you know, Luke working the Halloween dance is the reason why we can get there for the finale. Um, but that, that, that scene is a funnier scene just by how in control he is. And I love the bit when the principal goes... Excuse me, who are you? In like relation to like the family, because he's, oh. he's I'm a friend of the family. Yeah, it's, 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 it's great, great, fucking brilliant. Um, also, just also him mentioning that uh, Luke being gay. I mean, it, it's something that probably shouldn't be looked too much into, but definitely the way that he idolizes Dan Stevens' character. There's definitely. Oh, I, I would totally believe because they they never talk about it. But if he was, I mean, sure. You've got to like, think, Luke. Luke finds out the Dan Stevens' character is a killer but he doesn't care he's like oh we're we're friends though right you know he he knows that he's this murderer but he just doesn't care because he's he's got this like really cool motherfucker he's like his best friend is great that was a really interesting scene like that hallway scene because literally luke basically spoils it he's like by the way i know you're the killer and he's like what he's like yeah but i don't really care and i was like that's What's... not something you see very often when it's, someone's yeah, just like in, the, in this kind of movie for sure yeah Usually it's like you're the killer, and then they get killed. But instead, he's like, "You're the killer." But I love that you see when he says that as well. You see the guest totally kind of turns. Like as soon as he he's like, "Shit, this little lad knows who I like." I'm I'm killing people, and then he says, "Yeah, but I'm not going to tell anyone." 
it's like he just that's the only like that in the end is the only time he slightly almost breaks character it's then like, he's like yeah we're friends it's, it's like if he has done this before he's never experienced that reaction before mm. like the idea like if this has happened to him before he's like nobody's ever said they don't care like <laughs> <laughs> but yeah yeah for sure so yeah I think that all his relationships the fact that you know, Maker Monroe's character kind of fancies him, then kind of doesn't like him, and then you could argue Luke's kind of awkward around him, and then starts to idolize him as well. So there's these two very different dynamics from each of the kids going into the. Finale. I would say he definitely idolizes him just from how he like reacts to the guy like picking on him with the fight scene. Yeah, yeah, he's like, fuck, you know, I've got a guy who can fuck. It's like a big brother mentality almost. Yeah. Um, so when they go into this Halloween maze. They go through, and, and just a little easter egg uh, in terms of some of the decorations that are hanging up. There is your next in blood written on the wall. Oh, that's neat. Which is a fun little reference. And yeah. um, all of the Halloween masks uh, on the wall, I think there is there's a witch, which is supposed to be a reference to Halloween... Is it Halloween 3? Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, which, by the way... It's my favorite Halloween movie. Really? That's, That's interesting. interesting because that is the one Halloween movie that doesn't have to do with Michael Myers, and it's my favorite. Yeah, and I'm sure they also have a Michael Myers mask hung up and a uh, Jack o' Lantern kind of. Thing By the way, I well. might actually get—I I don't care, but I might get shit for that because that is supposed to be known as like the a most terrible movie. People say it's awful. I think it's fantastic. It's so weird <laughs> that it becomes great because the plot is just so. I will get that'll that'll be a topic for another day. I actually want to do a whole episode about that movie, but just know that, yeah, I think that's better than the Michael Myers. Michael Myers is great, but I think it's better. So. Oh, there we go then. Um, so Send your hate mail to recapitatepodcast.com. Do, do you have a recapitate email, or is that some nonsense going down? It, it's bullshit. <laughs> Stop chatting shit, I, I, Dave. I, you know what? I am going to plug this. I'm sorry. I do have a website now. Oh, gosh. Recapitatepodcast.com. All the episodes are going there first. That's so... right. That, send all your malware there. All your malware, all your Trojans and viruses, straight there. Straight there. It's it's not just Tumblr with a, a domain name, we swear. Fuck off, Dan! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I just noticed we're talking about Dan Stevens playing a character called David, and we've got Dan and Dave on the podcast. Oh, shit. It's like it was supposed to be. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> so they're there at the Halloween dance, uh, and then they walk in to a, a hall of mirrors, isn't it? Yes. And the military guy's there. Boom. Out comes Teacher Spencer, whatever the fuck. So fuck the fucking Steve Brawl walks around the corner. <laughs> Slit throat. <laughs> collapses to his knees and there's this gorgeous shot of like, like fucking about with the mirrors with, with, with the shots it turns into some nicholas wind and refin bullshit the neon demon whatever you want to call it oh, where we've God. got blades that are mirroring into each other some sony vegas shit going on and <laughs> it like the blood dripping and the military guy shit himself because it, it turns into like is it like goldfinger the the, the 007 movie yeah when there's like millions of dan stevens everywhere and, right, and, and this is when the movie takes that step into oh this is now horror you've gone from that thriller suspense into an action movie into a horror it's gone, movie yeah it's gone into a slasher film yeah so I think I, and that's my reason that, you know there's so much Halloween this this final scene is the most pivotal part of the movie and it is full on horror the, I think because you spend you think of like other horror movies when you barely see the slasher you spend so much time with David and you take time to realize how fucking crazy he is then it's like okay it makes the, it that much more intense that's why I kind of uh, I'm gonna draw this reference again Patrick Bateman American Psycho yeah just because you spend most of the movie with this character and then they end up being the villain in the end so yeah it it makes it such a hard movie to not like the protagonist but i really like the kid characters as well i think maker monroe is fantastic she's gorgeous which is always a plus but uh, i i think she's really good in the role as well as the big sister yeah um i don't know who the kid is that he just looks like a it looks like chloe moretz dressed as a boy <laughs> <laughs> but um it does he does a good job as well. Um, it looks like... You know what it looks like? He looks like the fat kid from Stranger Things that has an emo wig on. Yeah, I, I could get behind that. He's got that little yeah. kind of... That horned toad kind of smile. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah, Dave goes in there. Down goes 
the teacher. Dave confronts the military guy. Bam! Down he goes. And then the creepiest shit happens. They're there at the disco. Fog machines go on. Lights go on. And Dave plays the CDR that, um, that make her burn for him. Yeah, Dan um, starts to... Uh, he basically... Uh, plays the song that it was the same song they were listening to in that car ride for, on the way back from the party, right? Yeah, so the, the fact that you know he plays that for Anna, Anna Peterson, Peterson family, there we go. Um, instantly, it's like he's being intimidating and instantly controlling that environment again, where he's like, Oh, yeah, you, you're, you're fucking dead right now. It, it, it you know, even, even if you think about his military conditioning, is it sinister that he decides to play that? CD, or is it his way of trying to be like, hey, I'm playing this this song that you burnt, burnt for me right now. You know what I mean? Is it meant to be heartwarming for, uh, from his perspective? You know, if this is her older brother, you don't know. You really don't know. Yeah. Uh, so, continuing on from that, down comes Dan, takes out the the kid. Little Luke goes to hide. He's got a knife. He. The, the fog uh, totally encapsulates this uh, this disco hall, doesn't it? And isn't there like there's blood steps, and then his shoes are gone, or her, no? It's uh, her shoes, right? Are gone. No, no, Anna's her, shoe, yeah, her, shoes. wearing her boots, like he's following her, and then she took him off, and then she appears behind him with a gun, and then she shoots him three times, and he fucking gets yeah, up. pretty p- point blank range too, <laughs> and he gets up like that is how. This guy is supernatural. You know, it's not. Oh, he. Oh, he's really good with weapons. Oh, he doesn't have to sleep or, or eat much. You know, he he drinks all the time. It has no effect. He he takes a huge smoke of the joint. It does nothing. He can hold two kegs of beer. He's fucking buff. He took three shots and continues to live. He's like the fucking Terminator. You don't know who this, what this guy is, or or what his powers are. And that is why it was sold to me as evil Captain America. Yeah, and uh, we should probably talk about the ending, which I'm iffy on to be honest. Yeah, so Luke comes out of nowhere, stabs Dan Stevens, but pretty fucking harshly. You're like, can he get up from this? Yeah. And he, 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 you see him visibly, you know, die or what have you. Fog fills the hall. The kids get out. Police turn up. Classic However, I do want to bring uh, up I do want to bring up that I, I, I'm sure it wasn't because he's been a great actor the whole time. When he died, he sort of did the ugh thing. I'm thinking he purposely faked his death. I'm, I'm feeling that as well. Well, obviously he does purposely fake his death. I mean, well, yeah, like he either did that really dramatically or that just wasn't the best take. I'm leaning more <laughs> towards the dramatic I, part. I, I would like to think that it's it's him trying to show the kids I'm dead. Because at the end of, I mean, let's just, let's just jump into the ending. The, the kids are there in the ambulance. Um, and the, the police are looking after them. They've had the shittiest fucking day. Mom and dad are dead. You know, all, all, their, all their friends and shit are dead. And, and, and you know, then you he- you overhear some of the, the fire department talking, don't you? And uh, then they say, only two bodies. So that's the teacher, the military guy, and uh, no David. And they say, all the bodies have their teeth knocked out. What the fuck? Mm. And then, all of a sudden, all these uh, guys in uh, hazmat suits come out, and one of them is limping. And where sure where enough, Luke would have stabbed him. He yeah. turns, looks directly at the kids, and then uh, Anna, with a, with, a, with a song in her heart, says, what the fuck? And then the movie ends. Yep. And it's got... That, that, for me, is such a hype ending. I absolutely love... It, it, it doesn't even tease it. It's just like, oh yeah, it's, it's still him. He's managed to get out. And it's like, where does the movie go from there? Do the kids just scream and run up and get him? And, and the police take care of him? Or do they just let him go? You don't know what the fuck happens. It's a fantastic you don't know. ending. It, it, like a lot of things in this movie, it's very open-ended. Not a lot of questions are answered. It, it is, And that's what makes the movie for me so rewatchable. You know, I, I'd never even conceived... Uh, up until now that Caleb could be the guest you know and I think that's the reason for for the title as well that this this guy has no name he is the villain he is the thing he is the guest you know what I mean yeah they think it's uh what's his name uh Collins but 
No, it's not. They, even though he has the dog tags, but he obviously just stole those. So it, it's it's a tough call, but that's the point of it. I, I guess they want it. That's the if, if we knew everything about this movie, it it wouldn't probably have had a life beyond twenty fourteen. No, definitely not. This was just like a one off thing where like every question was answered. I don't think it would have as much rewatchability. So but, a lot of movies do like you hmm. know like if you answer all the questions, that's what pe- that's what people want. But this time, like, I think it works just from, you know, the tone of the film. Yeah, and, and, and you know, to get back to our point of, of is this a horror movie? Does this belong on the Recapitate podcast? That final scene, it leaves you with that horror theme. When you think about the movie, you always think about this end scene. You think about there's pumpkins and scarecrows and shit all over the movie. Um, it, it, it's got that whim- it's got that childishness to it it's got the the slasher vibe there's enough going on that you can you you could watch this at Halloween this could become your Halloween movie or you could watch it at any time you know what I mean actually the first thing you see in the entire movie is a scarecrow with a jack-o'-lantern on it yes and then it cuts it, it's like uh, he's running isn't he yeah uh, which is strange because he's like I ran all the way here once I got discharged and Right. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I, I think the more you think, Dave, Dave, to say I had the exact same reaction you did. I mean, when you watched this movie a couple of days ago, you rewatched it yesterday. I have found myself rewatching this movie again and again since I saw it. Now that night when I watched this with Tommy and Brett, after being introduced as Evil Captain America, it end, it ended, and I was like, oh, that was pretty good. That was, I, I enjoyed that film. But dude, the longer it stuck with me, and the more I showed it to other people, and just to get their reaction and. And the more I thought about it, and, and just the the aesthetic of it, the soundtrack, that that old Antonio song, that oh Antonio, it's been way too long, yeah. that plays when like it's just the one on one between um, Anna and Dave. Mm-hmm. It, it's so it's whimsical. It's it's almost romantic, and but it's it's still creepy. It's it, it's great. I I cannot get enough of it. Yeah. Um, the, and the, uh, you know when he's got that limp as well he that is him as a full slasher character oh absolutely he just completely snaps at one point <laughs> like like towards the end when like luke is hiding in the end of the boxes or whatever with the knife he basically just says i wish there was another way to do this i'm sorry yeah. like but even like he's being apologetic but the whole time it, it he becomes so sinister um it's it's great he's he's one of the most likable villains in a, in a movie for, for me, I've got to say. Yeah. Hopefully he'll definitely get some more uh, recognition as a good slasher villain. Because, you know, when you think of the slasher villains, you think of mostly, you th- mostly think of the 80s. So, yeah, well, hopefully I, he'll I, get up there. I would say The Guest, probably the best slasher movie of, like, the past five years or so. It, it's, it's a good... Um, if you want to call it a slasher. But I, I almost I would, think... You know what? I think I would call it a... I would call it a suspenseful slasher. That's what I would title it as. Because I feel like the the action stuff is great, but there's not quite enough of it to be an action movie. There's not quite enough drama for it to be a drama movie. The whole movie, as you said, is suspense, um, which I it think it has just a little bit of everything, which is what it needs to be. And I hope that's what's going to take Adam Wingard, you know, on with his. His future projects. This is the guy that's doing. He's doing Death Note for Netflix, and he's and he's just released uh, Blair Witch. So, hopefully, yeah. his his knack of suspense will lead him to greater things. I'd love to see him do things besides horror because he's that's definitely what he's sticking to. But I would I'd want to see another full on big budget horror movie from him. Yeah, great. definitely. I'd like to see him do like something like uh, more like in the tone of this, maybe a little bit more violent. But I'd actually I think he could do a pretty good action movie. If he wanted to as well. Yeah. And, and I can see it now. Like Dan Stevens will probably go on to become an action star. Um, we'll see how he gets picked up. He's, he's definitely got the build for it. Well, he's starring in Legion, which is that new X-Men TV show. Oh, really? And it's about a guy with a split personality, which makes me very excited to see. Wow, how... that, that's, that's good casting, actually. Yeah. Like, obviously, he very, definitely has this one very fixated personality really weird but he's so intense think this guy got this guy got a start on downton abbey <laughs> yeah really he was, in, he was in like the first couple of seasons my of mom abbey. watches that show <laughs> <laughs> well there you go now your mom can watch the guest yeah mom let's, let's go get uh, mama cap f- check it out yeah 
uh, this episode's dedicated to my mom. No, nobody else can listen but her. Rest in peace. All right. Any th- anything else, Danny? Well, I suppose I could just say on the subject of Adam Wingard, um, great guy. If you you know, not to big up the director too much. Um, he's got a Tumblr. He retweets uh, a lot of uh, S and M porn, and I'm not even kidding. <laughs> Um, and also, he responds to Tumblr messages, which is great. If you ever shoot him hey, a message, that's cool. um, I told him like the effect that this movie had on me. I let him know that this, if I ever I'm I'm having a party, if it doesn't even like if not at Halloween or, or anything, we'll just be getting together, having some drinks. This is a great movie to put on in the background. It is not overly. All you need to know is, hey, something's up with this guy, and he's staying with a family. People can come in and out. And every, I guarantee, if you put this on a party, everybody is tuning in for the like the final ten minutes. Everybody. Oh will yeah, be I could definitely totally agree with into that. it. Yeah. Um, and I told uh, Adam that, and he was like, "This might sound strange, but I'm actually very glad to hear that this is a movie that goes down well at parties." And I was like, "Well, I'm glad that I could have that effect on him." Yeah, you'd think like you'd think he'd kind of be going for sort of an artsy feel, but I mean, to to think that he is in the mood for just a sort of a uh, sort of a, you know, laid back put this on just to you know for with friends that's good that well, it's, really is it's good. clear that his influence does come from those like classic horror movies so oh hopefully definitely. this will be a modern classic within a few years time if it gets the recognition yeah. cult classic for sure well it's recommended the guest check it out it's a good movie it's a it's a fro- froggy with fries favorite there you go uh it's a triple f a quadruple f no that's that's there's no f with the w that'd be froggy fifth fries <laughs> Let, let, let's, let's not do any of that. Let's move on. <laughs> Wrap this fucker up. I gotta pee. All right. How are we gonna end this? Um, we we could we just need to do like we'll do a build up and then we'll just do like the synthy boom. If you got that organ ready. Oh, I, I always got the organ ready. Okay, so All right. I'll just do like a thing and then we'll cut out. So. Shit. Ha 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 